They say changes comes in threes. I don't know about all that, but number two wasted no time coming by, and it too was going to change my life. I went to the window and looked out and thought about the explosions I'd seen the night before. I'd had a hard time sleeping because curiosity really wanted me to find out what was going on up there. The other part of me, the smart little voice, said don't worry about it dummy. I went about my daily business trying to get it out of my head but that did not work. So then I thought, why could it possibly hurt? Let's just drive by real, real quick in our ship and see what's going on. What possible harm could there be in that? When I pulled up to the side, it took my breath away. It was a freelancer. It had been blown apart. I didn't pick up anything on life readings, and just as well, as I didn't have a spacesuit, could not EVA, nor could I open my ship up to let anyone in as far as a rescue. I looked around as best I could, thinking I could radio this in, but without life signs there was no hurry as I could see it. I also noticed there was a lot of floating weaponry and shields and other components that I could take and salvage and make enough money to probably fix my ship. But I was getting ahead of myself before I started thinking about doing an EVA and salvage and great riches. I was going to have to come up with a spacesuit. And that meant heading home and seeing what I could come up with. I had mounds and mounds of treasure and more ships than you could shake a stick at. However, finding a working undersuit and helmet proved to be a lot more difficult than I expected. Several adages come to mind, one being necessity is the mother of invention. Another might be perseverance pays off. But I think finally the biggest one that applied here was beggars can't be choosers. And I was most definitely a beggar. My suit would have not won any kind of fashion show. It had been pieced together with a number of different suits and scraps that I could find, plus about two rolls of duct tape. If you think the suit was bad, the helmet was no better. Hasty wells and more duct tape, I just hoped it would hold together to let me go out there that one time. It had been a long time since I'd taken a stroll in the big black. It was kind of disconcerting. The wreck site up close and personal like this made it even more devastating. The loneliness of space made it almost overpowering, the silence. I noticed the crew members had not even been wearing EVA suits, so it must have come as a complete shock to them, whatever it was that happened. My suit jerked and lurched all the many sizes of jets, making it difficult to control. I found other bodies again, no EVA suits, and moved my way further into the wreckage. Then all of a sudden, just like a 3D optical puzzle, something took form in the wreckage. It was a fighter, and I was looking right down the barrel of its gun. They say fortune favors the bold, so I decided to capitalize on that. Then I realized there was nobody in the pilot seat, nor was there anyone in the turret. So I decided the best thing to do would be to move in on it. All right, lucky, oh, oh, God. Okay, so they know I'm clumsy now. Okay, where you guys at? I felt, I felt like I had eyes on me from the back. I just knew a shot was going to come ringing out at any time. So in answer, I ran into the ship. Oof. Yeah, like that. 
I sent out a uh, quick hail with my helmet radio. Heard no answer. Not that I expected one. I came across the back end of the ship, sent another hail, decided this wasn't working, so I got out my multi-tool and banged it against the hull a couple of times, thinking maybe they could hear the noise and send me some sort of a signal. I got nothing back from either one of those. Bracing myself, I went ahead and switched over to the cutting attachment on my multi-tool. I wasn't going to cut the door off, but if I could find the micro switch limiter, I could blaze through that thing and maybe trigger the door. Oh! The door had hit me full in the face. My vision grayed around the edges and I heard glass starting to crack in the faceplate. I had no choice but to go in at this point. I just hoped there was not a load of buckshot waiting for me on the other side of that door. I didn't get a face full of buckshot, but what I did get just took me back. I could not even put into words what it was I was looking at. I sat there and stared for what seemed like hours, though I'm sure only moments passed. It was the most strange thing I'd ever witnessed. It was a body that was twisted around in ways I could not even fathom. It looked like a fan duel had tried to tie the guy into a knot. You couldn't even tell where the body started and ended at some point. I knew without a doubt he was dead and his vacant eyes verified that. I couldn't stand looking at it, so I tied him to the turret and then drug him back up inside there and secured him. I went out and I collected the other bodies from the wreckage and I threw them in the back of this ship, not knowing what else to do with it. I decided to take the ship. I couldn't risk too many more EVA walks with my helmet being in the shape it was. I hated to leave my little Merlin there, but I had plans to come back and try to get it. As I flew through space, many questions crossed my mind. What was this ship doing there? What had happened to that guy? What was going on that blew that freelancer apart so dramatically? And then when I started paying attention more to the ship I was in, found some irregularities there. Its transponder was saying that it was a civilian Aurora of an older model. It had not showed up on radar when I had approached, so it had to be stealthy. There was no distress beacon had been sent out by the ship. Even those automated kinds seem to go off no matter what happens. Somebody was trying to cover this up. There was more to this than met the eye. Oh, 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 oh. I have to take those bodies back. And like right now. I knew that whoever was pulling this cover up off would be suspicious if there were no bodies in the wreckage. I couldn't turn in the bodies to authorities because it would point right back at me and I didn't want that. I couldn't just hide the bodies because the families would never know what happened and I have a soft heart. That left me taking the bodies back. I'd recovered the Merlin earlier and I didn't want to take the Vanguard back to the wreck site as I didn't really know what role it had played and I had other plans for that ship. There isn't cargo space on the Merlin so I won't go into detail on how I lashed the bodies to my little fighter and got them to the wreck, but no sooner had I cleared the area than I got a visit from the UEE Navy. I decided to play dumb. Unidentified Merlin, your transponder is squawking garbage. Please identify yourself. Do not attempt to maneuver. Um, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, hello, hello, sir. Um, yes, we were actually just on our way to go get that, uh, get that fixed. We had, we had run through a little bit of solar flare and, uh, and it was, uh, uh quit working. So yeah, I'm trying to go get it fixed right now. Unidentified Merlin failed to provide identification. What are you doing in this area? What are your intentions? Uh, really, really uh, not doing anything. We're just passing from uh, from A A to B. Why is there something out here I should be worried about? 
Other than the fact, Marlon, you should be worried about a lot of things, not the least of which you are in violation of the UEE Navy Exclusion Zone. Oh, oh, Please oh, state sorry, your identity. Yeah, my, my radio's not working real well either, so I, I did not I did not hear that transmission. Um, so yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, I tell you what, we'll we'll just we'll just go on our way and uh, and get out of you guys' hair. So yeah, thanks, that is thanks, negative man. unidentified Merlin. You are to fall in formation behind our lead ship. We will be taking you back to the nearest UEE facility um, where you will uh, be detained well, uh, until we can get this Are you sure we have to do out. that? I mean, really, we uh, um, uh, oh well, that's a dumb conversation anyway. I don't even know. Unidentified Merlin, stop or we will be taken under fire. Uh, this is Tango 1 Actual to any station is net. We are in pursuit of an unidentified Merlin and we have lost contact. Anyone have him on sensors? Uh, this is uh, TV2. Uh, we have no contacts on sensors currently. Over. Ah, uh, this is T1 Actual. Tango 1 Actual. We are RTV. Out. I let the Navy fleet get out of sensor range before I turned power back onto my little ship. I'd got away with this time, and they didn't know who I was. But whoever was pulling the strings on this was plenty high up with the UE exclusion zone. The Navy was involved. The Vanguard had been a military ship disguised as a civilian. What had happened to the uh, freelancer? What had happened to that body? I don't know. I think once again, curiosity was going to get the better of me.